हेलो फ्रेंड्स हाउ आर यू नमस्ते सलाम सत श्रीकाल बुंजू लजमी कमसवा कैसे हैं टुडेज़ वीडियो इज इज़ अ कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ माय प्रीवियस वीडियो इन विच आई एक्सप्लेन यू अंडर ग्रेजुएट एडमिशन प्रोसीजर इन कनाडा इन टुडेज़ वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट graduate admission requirements procedure how can you get into a good school in canada so that's what is what, what my plan is for today uh the first step of uh, graduate studies is to find out what is your uh, aim what why you want to come for a graduate studies of course you want to go come for a program to complete so maybe you have done undergraduate studies in engineering or accounting or business or sciences and you want to pursue a masters degree or a phd in that field so the first thing is that in canada it's not necessary that if you have done a undergrad degree in engineering in for example electrical engineering so you must do a, a masters or phd in uh, electrical engineering you can choose different fields uh, related to electrical engineering for example if you have done electrical engineering you can come here and do electronics software engineering or even mechanical engineering or engineering management any kind of program so the first step to go for a uh, uh, graduate program is to choose your program and uh, in that way the first thing is if you decide what you want to do go to the university look what kind of programs available in the university and then you apply for uh, those programs the basic uh, basic requirement for admission in the graduate program for a masters degree is a 4 years bsc honors so in canada is uh, 12 years of high school and then 4 years is bsc honors if you have not done your bsc honors if you have done only a 3 years which is a bsc or ba pass uh, program you need to apply for graduate studies but they offer you first of all to complete uh, a qualifying year where you take uh, additional courses and then after qualifying year you enter into a graduate program in terms of requirements uh, in grade wise uh, in uh, undergraduate level if you are applying for a masters you have to have at least a uh, mid b which is around 73% to 75% uh, uh, your grade uh, your score like like your last 2 years of your uh, marks should be around that range but if you are applying for a phd program so that at a masters level you must have at least 75 and above uh, marks uh, in the la- in the masters level so that you can be apply- you can apply for uh, phd program all right so once you have decided about your program uh, you would be next step would be to uh, apply and gather all the information that uh, university would require from you uh, you need transcripts that need to be sent directly from your academic uh, institutions where have you studied to the university you are applying uh, that include like uh, your high school uh, transcripts and also your undergraduate ba or bsc transcripts and detailed marks showing your grades and your score that whatever marks you have obtained there second step would be to find some letter of references so you have to pick two references at least to give to your university and then uh, university will either contact you them directly to for your reference about your academic work your intention your research skill your analytical skills how critical you think about the pro- uh, pr- problems so or they will ask you to obtain letter of reference and then uh, send them and the sealed envelope to the university a third step for the graduate studies is uh, a letter of intent a letter of intent is that uh, ask the university ask you that why you want to come for a graduate studies what you want to achieve from a masters degree by doing a masters degree what is uh, so interesting and 
uh, about the programs that you want to apply. So they want to test that how much knowledge you have about the program and how much uh, driven, like I mean, ambitious you are to complete your master's program. And good universities in Canada, like University uh, Toronto University or Queen's University or University of British Columbia, they put lots of emphasis onto the letter of intent and maybe less emphasis on your grades. So even if you have uh, B average, and but your letter of intent is very strong, you have a greater chance of getting into those good universities. Uh, another step is like some universities, depending on the program you're applying, they might ask you writing sample. If you have written any, any uh, article or you have published some uh, uh, article in a journal or if you have an essay written in the school, they would like to see are you good in writing. And writing actually shows your analytical skills, how you comprehend uh, different uh, topics and uh, present them in a concise and precise way. Uh, if your English is not your first language, the university will ask you for uh, TOEFL or for IELTS. A uh, score for TOEFL is around, if you have around uh, 570, I would say, to 600, that's a good score. And uh, that's what not mostly most universities require. And if you have IELTS, so any score between 7 to 8 is considered a good score. Uh, if you're applying for a business program like uh, Master of Business Administration, so universities may ask you to provide GMAT graduate management admission test uh, uh, score around uh, 550 to 600 is a good GMAT score and uh, most universities require about that score. So one more thing here is that most of the time universities don't ask you for GRE. GRE is a graduate record examination. So if you have uh, not done GRE and if you are interested to obtain some sort of financial support from the universities, I would suggest that uh, before applying for a master's program, please do GRE. Or even if you're doing for a PhD, a GRE score is a good score. So GRE score, if you have about 150 to 155 in a verbal section and 155 to 160 into a quantitative section and about 3.5 to 4 in uh, analytical section. So that's considered as a good GRE score. And the beauty is that if you have done a GRE score, your chances of getting financial support from the universities uh, is uh, almost uh, very uh, strong. Okay, now we reach the final stage and uh, about uh, possibilities of uh, getting financial support from the universities. Uh, generally speaking, when you apply for a graduate study, you don't need to apply separately for financial support. Universities always consider you financial support. So it all depends on your GRE score, depends on your uh, marks into your undergraduate uh, degrees and your letter of intent and your capability of uh, performing that uh, task that the university can offer you as a student. Uh, there are four ways to get a financial support and the most popular one is the, known as the teaching assistantship. This is called TA ship in Canada. So the teaching assistantship is interesting because I've been a TA and I've been, uh, when I was uh, in a PhD program, I also uh, hired TAs and gave them tasks to perform. Uh, in order to secure a TA ship, uh, if you have about, uh, you know, uh, your GPA is around uh, about 10 or in other words, if your average score is A minus, which is about 80%, you can be considered for a TA ship. And the value in Canada is around 10 to 12,000 for a TA ship, which covers almost one year fees. And the tasks that TA are assigned are very simple. They are asked to provide tutorials to undergraduate students or do some sorts of uh, assignment marking for the undergraduate students. So that type of work uh, is a very nominal work, but they are offered good salaries. Second uh, possibility is to get a research assistantship. It is like RA, that's called RA. Uh, in a teaching assistantship, you attach with a professor 
uh, who have uh, acquired some research grant from uh, different uh, organizations and then he needs some support to manipulate data to gather data to you know analyze data so those kind of thing so the value it depends uh, how much work the professor is asking you to do but normally i mean it's a good uh, amount that you can get from the professor and the good thing is that your experience uh, as a research assistant is counted when you apply for uh, jobs outside your academic uh, institution a third way is the merit scholarship which is uh, based on your academic grade if you are a super super duper uh, candidate and uh, your uh, marks and your you know all kind of uh, transcripts show that you are a great student so you can get some scholarship from the universities and it ranges between 1000 to 12000 dollars and the, finally there are external awards that are available to graduate students uh, these awards are provided by various organizations uh, and outside the university and uh, it supports it kind of uh, provides supports to uh, support to graduate students here i want to say that for a graduate uh, student at a phd level it is almost guaranteed that if you are coming for a phd if you have been accepted for a phd you will get ta ship or a research assistantship and so don't worry if you are coming to canada you should get that but otherwise i would not come even for phd because i'm going to spend my four or five years after masters and uh, without uh, financial support i would not do that because my opportunity cost is very high uh, one more point here I would like to finally say is about uh, the work uh, while you are stud uh, while you are a student. You can work outside the university for 20 hours a week. That gives you good money. If you even if you work at 15 dollars an hour, which is a minimum wage, about 14, 15, mm -hmm. uh, that covers up your living expenses. Or if you are working in the university, uh, in the library, or in any other retail store or a bookstore or anywhere else you can make extra money so those so hope are you like this video if you like uh, the video please subscribe my channel i'm uh, presenting a next video very soon on why should we come to canada why not go to britain so i'm comparing british education with the canadian education uh, at a graduate level at a master's and a phd level so